Hi, and welcome to On The Spot. My name is Ronnie Wiley. To my right is the brand new superintendent of Fayette County Schools, Jeremy Duncan. Jeremy, hey. how are you? We got I'm it right. Great. Yeah, thanks yeah, so much. Yeah, all right, that's, that's uh, one for one, I guess. Uh, <laughs> I like the new set here. Uh, you're great. the first one on the show with the, with the brand new uh, table we got going on here. And so you're the new superintendent of Fayette County Schools. And um, you know, tell us a little bit about yourself and where you come from. Give us a background. Yeah, thanks for having me, first of all. Yeah. I appreciate it. Um, I, like you said, Jeremy Duncan, I'm originally from Delaware County. I, I'm a Muncie Central graduate. Mm -hmm. so. Um, if we you, won't hold that against you. I know. Because you I probably know. beat us in basketball a lot. <laughs> well, I, I did play basketball there. I, uh, if you if you kept me, I probably still bleed purple. But um, but that's been a long time since mm -hmm. I've since I've been in Delaware County. Um, I've been a Randolph County resident. I lived near Farmland, Indiana, and five acres there with a beautiful wife uh, who we've been together since I was sixteen, oh, and wow, she was beautiful. fifteen, and uh, have two wonderful kids there. Um, my son is a senior at Monroe Central. He's a basketball, baseball, mm -hmm. football player, like a uh, really busy guy. And then my daughter is 20 and uh, mm. loves to ride horses. We have two horses at our house. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's, that's kind of what life looks like for the mm -hmm. Duncans. But, mm -hmm. um, but excited, so excited to be in Connorsville at Fayette County School Corporation and um, blessed with the opportunity to be to serve. Like that's, that's why I'm here. That's my mm -hmm. heart. And uh, I, I'm excited to be here. Before we get into to what brought you here and what, what was the, the, the uh, I guess, the genesis of you wanting to get here, uh, let's get to the start of, of your career. Yeah, sure. So you grew up in Delaware County. What what got you into education? Was there a specific teacher yeah. that you thought, man, I, I want to be yeah. like him or those her? Are, those are fun stories to tell. Yeah. Um, so I had the opportunity the first day of school this year to, to talk a little bit to our staff about my story. And so I, I just love to tell people why I got in it and why I do what I do. Mm -hmm. Um, and so I had the opportunity. I didn't like school growing up. School was not fun. I asked you before we got on the air, were you a heathen in school? <laughs> I was, I was not a heathen. Yeah, no, I was. I was, so, I, yeah. I was very quiet. I, I was introverted. Um, I didn't want anything to do with the spotlight, and I mm -hmm. still don't love it. But... Um, but no, school was not my jam. I, I didn't right. really enjoy it, um, and it wasn't so much that I didn't have good people there. It just it just wasn't my thing, and right. it was hard for me. School was right. hard, and it and it never came easy when I was young. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, I had so many teachers uh, who you know, and instilled so much in me and poured poured into me in ways that I, I didn't know, and it made me feel like I could do things that I didn't realize I could do myself. And um, over the course of time, I think about those people um, both in the classroom and in the in, on the field of play or the court. Right. Um, who had that type of impact, you know, and yeah. you look back on that and you think to yourself, I want to do that very same thing. You know, I want to be that person for someone else. You know, I'm going to step in the gap. And really, that's why I got into it originally. Right. You know how it is. It's, it's that. Yeah. We all have that time um, when that, that point of divergence in our lives where we have to make a decision on where we're going and what yeah. we're doing. And I remember as a high school senior, I still I still didn't know where I wanted to be. And um, God got a hold of my heart and pushed me towards that, that the classroom. And um, from there, I went to Ball State for my undergrad, chirp chirp, and uh, was uh, elementary education major, and mm -hmm. uh, and uh, stepped into the classroom thereafter, and the rest is history. But um, it's uh, it's those those folks who really made a difference in my life and changed my perspective on school. Um, mm -hmm. That made me want to do the very same thing for others. So, was there an epiphany? Mo was there an, like was the, oh, this is this is what I want to do? Was there? Do you remember like that moment? Where Man, I don't thought, know. I don't know if there or was, was just a, a moment. collection of time. Yeah, I think yeah. so. I think so. You know, I always wanted to coach. You know, yeah. um, and I always prided myself on being a teacher first and a coach second. Right. Even yeah. as a head coach, yeah. um, I always wanted to be an educator. You know, even when people ask me today as a superintendent, what do you do for a living? You know, my my response is I'm an educator. You know, that's yeah. what I do. Right. Um, I don't leave with the fact that I'm a superintendent because at my heart, that's that's what I want to be as an educator. Right. I want to help people and, and help them grow. Um, so I don't know that there was one moment in time necessarily right. um, in the journey that I decided that was the right thing. Um, but I, I think I kind of knew all along. And then once you get into college and you start to taste it a little bit, yeah. um, it, it, it uh, helps solidify that, that decision. So. so when you were in college, you had more of an idea of, okay, the elementary is where I want to be yeah. starting. Yeah. Did you think from then that I want to get in the administrative side or was it just strictly in the classroom? Yeah, I always thought I'd be a superintendent by 40. Really? Yeah, I yeah. did. I did. Um, you know, I don't know that when I was an 18 year old freshman, that was really on my mind. Right. You know, at that point in time, just trying to figure out life, you know, right. um, and trying to make it to class on time, but and as keep you my grades up and through. all those things. Yeah, I actually started as a secondary major because I thought 
as a as a high school coach because I wanted to be a coach yeah. that I had to be a high school teacher. Yeah. Um, it just wasn't it wasn't my my thing, and so yeah. I learned very quickly. My mom was a daycare provider growing up, and so I had little ones around me from the time that I was well. Forever. Yeah, 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 yeah. And so I had that built-in alarm clock, but I also had the opportunity <laughs> right. to to work with kids and to be around children, and um, that was really where my heart was. And so I very quickly learned when I got into college that the elementary route was the route that I wanted to go. And um, man, I was blessed. For I always taught fifth grade when I was in the classroom. Um, oh, you stayed in one, 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 one grade. Yeah, yeah. So I was oh, in fifth great. grade every year yeah. in the classroom. Um, I've, I've substitute taught in many different places and and had the chance to be with kids of different ages. But um, fifth grade was really fun. And where was your first school? Was it in Muncie? Were you in elementary no. in Muncie? No, I actually, uh, coaching took me to Blue River Valley. So that's oh, where wow. I, I first started yeah, as a okay. teacher. I was yeah. there in fifth grade for about seven years yeah. um, before. Is, is Blue River, is that in Delaware County? Or is that that's in, actually Henry County. That's what I thought. I yeah. thought it was, didn't know exactly. Yeah. So that's that's like close by Shenandoah or? Uh, yeah, yeah, actually. Of, yeah. It's on State Road 36, okay. yeah. 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 So yeah, so you 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 so you kept in the area. Yeah, for sure. Know, so you didn't have to be too far from the family. Did your wife was she in the education she's, field? No, she's not. She's actually a nurse, and so oh wow, okay. So she works currently works at Ball State's Health Center okay. uh, on campus there, working with yeah. college kids, and yeah. has done that for quite some time. So she serves people in a different way. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 She has a heart for service as well, and. Um, and that, that's, that's done us well. Yeah. Um, as a nurse, you know, typically long hours are, are a part of that, weekends, holidays, things like that, working on a, a college campus. Yeah. Um, that hasn't necessarily been the case, which is nice. And so um, she had summers off when I, had, yeah. when I was in the classroom and could take my summers off and we travel. And it, uh, it was a really a blessing to have yeah. her have that flexibility in her yeah. schedule. So, yeah. so you're, you, you and your wife obviously went to college together at the same time. Um, did you get married while you were in college, or did you guys wait until you got out of college? Yeah, we were done. We yeah. were done with school. Yeah. Uh, we had dated for a long time before that happened. So yeah, yeah. Um, folks so, were... so you got to know her really well then. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, before, before, Abs before, yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um, you know, we we're best friends, and so That's awesome. um, and have been forever, and yeah. it feels like forever anyway, and in a good yeah. way. I don't mean a bad right. way. Oh yeah. But, yeah. Um, but yeah, you know, it, and had the opportunity to have some ups and downs in your relationship, I think, sure, before learning. you step into that, mm -hmm. that covenant that is marriage and mm -hmm. um, understand just what that means. You know, we mm -hmm. live in a disposable society. Right, yeah. And so oftentimes we see, um, you know, we we have our weed we, weed weeder, our whacker gill bad, and we just throw it out, right? Right, yeah. And uh, I think sometimes we can see relationships the same way in our world mm -hmm. today, and we take the easy way out. And so we've tried really hard to, 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 to work through those things. Mm -hmm. and. You know, I, people say that that marriage can be difficult, and mm -hmm. you know we've not really had those those mm -hmm. difficulties. And uh, what a blessing that's been. Um, you know, we've had our seasons of time where sure. where things are different, but um, at the same time, I think when you keep the things that are really really important important, mm -hmm. I think the yeah. rest falls into line. So. I, I agree with that one hundred percent. One hundred percent. So you. Guys got married after school. What was there a plan of? Because her job obviously could take her anywhere. Your job could take you anywhere. Sure. Was there a? Was there like? Are we? We're gonna stick around here. Was that the plan, or was it wherever God takes you? Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I think a little bit of both. I mean, she she's a, a Randolph County girl. She yeah. she went to Monroe Central in high school. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. And she's uh, she farmland Indiana is is in her veins, and yeah. so. Um, you know, I think I think it would have been hard to uproot those those roots sure. and go somewhere else. And so um, that's where that's where we live now. We live on five acres there, just outside of town. And and so um, our paths have led us there. Um, you know, that doesn't mean if God opens the door somewhere else that we'd be closed minded to that. Right. But, um, but you, for now, and 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 that's where He's put us, and yeah. it's been good to us. It's been a good place to be. So yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, with. I, 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 I came from the city, so I understand, you know, <laughs> sure. how it is when you come to a smaller place. And it's like I swore, I told you before, when we came on the air, I was was going to be out of here when I turned 18. Here we yeah. are a lot of years later. <laughs> just a couple. Yeah, just just a, couple. a few, 35 few. Uh, <laughs> later, I'm, I'm still here. So um, so you, education, um, you, obviously that was something that wasn't in your blood, became in your blood, but coaching, something that's big yeah. in your life. What, what, uh, what, Coach, or what sports did you coach? Yeah, so I was always a basketball coach. Mm -hmm. um, that's that's what brought me to Blue River originally, mm -hmm. and then 
Um, had the chance to be about 16 years at the high school level and finished wow. my last five years as the head coach at Monroe Central and had had some really good success, won three three sectionals there. And Were you on the team that beat us? That, <laughs> we, you, we talked about that. Was that you? Were you the coach? I was not that? coaching then. Okay. No, I'm sorry. Say, you know, I have to edit that part I know, out. I'm yeah. so sorry. Yeah. <laughs> uh, my son was a freshman on that team. But, yeah, I remember, um, yeah, I remember you saying that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. but um, no, I was not, not a coach then. I, I yeah. had stepped away before that. You built that team. Well, <laughs> Coach Allum had a lot to yeah, do with yeah, that, their, yeah. their coach at that time, yeah. but um, but knew those kids growing up, right, obviously, right. through the program, and um, we had a lot of success. Again, won three sectional championships, had a chance to play in a semi-state game or a game away from a state finals, yeah. played Bowman Academy in the semi-state and played them really well, but just blessed to have good kids yeah. who worked really yeah. hard for me, and that journey was fun. I, I miss yeah. coaching. You know, I yeah. miss being with the kids, and... And the competition, you know, yeah. I, I could pick up a marker board and step on a sideline tomorrow and, and do it. I would love it. Yeah. <laughs> you can't do both, could you? I mean, not, you know, <laughs> you can't be superintendent and head coach, could you? You know, yeah. uh, that's, that'd be very, very rare. And yeah. we have wonderful coaches Probably very here. hard. Yeah. Yeah, 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 for sure. Coach yeah. McCullough does a wonderful job yeah. and the rest of our coaches. And um, I'll, I'll leave that to them. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah, but, yeah, yeah. But there have been, there actually have been uh, superintendents in Indiana who have done that. Yeah. So well, basketball is in our, in our blood here. You, know, you oh, just can't get rid sure. of it. Yeah, yeah especially yeah. here at the bowl. We travel very well. Yeah, yeah which is awesome. Yeah, yeah. We, uh, I've, we've done a lot of away games, and it's amazing how we sometimes out, outnumber the home team. Yeah, so, that's uh, awesome. It's, 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 it's Spartan Nation's real. Yeah, so, and I'm excited uh, to see that in yeah. person. Mm -hmm. It's going to be hard this year. This year's going to be a challenge. My son is a senior. He participates in basketball, baseball, and football. Mm -hmm. So you'll be obviously my role as father comes first. Absolutely. And, uh, yeah. and I, uh, I always say, if I fail at home as a father and a husband, I've already anywhere. failed as a superintendent. Yeah. And so um, being there is important. But at yeah. the same time, man, I, I want to. I want to be there as much as I can. Well, you'll never get that time back. You, you she's just a senior. Don't. Absolutely. Yeah, you never get that time back. You just back. don't. You can't and, get it back. But at the same time, I want to. I want to be. I want to be that superintendent that's there to cheer kids on. And yeah. um, and um, I think I think I've done that well in my past stops. Yeah. Um, finding that balance of of being present, but also being the father and husband I'm called to be. Yeah. And and I hope to do the same here. But excited to yeah. to get out and support so our Spartans. Talk, let's talk about your past stops. You from the classroom coaching. When did you really think, okay, now I, I need to start getting the administration? Yeah. Obviously, you probably went to princ being a principal, correct? So tell yeah. us about that, how that passed. Yeah. Forward. So uh, during my time at Monroe Central, I started as an elementary teacher there. Uh, I was there for a year before I uh, as assistant principal job in the high school opened up. Oh, wow. And so I actually did spend some time at the high school, middle school, high school level as an assistant principal. Yeah. Um, those days taught me a lot. Yeah. Um, and uh, it was a good experience for me. But, uh, you know, it was more about the opportunity that was in front of me at that point in time. Right. Again, I knew I wanted to be eventually a superintendent. Um, and obviously there's logical steps to that right. in terms of the progression. So an assistant principal made sense. And so I stepped right. into that role. I served in that role for four years. Yeah. And then thereafter, uh, I had the opportunity to become an elementary principal. And so um, at that point, I moved from Monroe Central to Winchester, Randolph Central Schools. Um, and I was I was an elementary principal there for nine years. Yeah. Um, had a chance to serve there for a long time, and uh, it, it was a lot of fun. I, I loved yeah. my time there. I was in a, a three through five building, and so yeah. um, that great those grades are really in my wheelhouse in terms yeah. of um, in terms of who I am and what I'm about. So right. yeah, yeah. So you relate better to that type of student. Yeah, you I say? relate to all. I hope I relate to all well, kids. Sure. Yeah, you know, I, yeah, but, yeah, right. But at the same time, um, That's my experience. Your yeah, my experience yeah. was in fifth grade, and yeah. so um, yeah. you know, I I, uh, I love all kids and 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 love the opportunity to make a difference right. in all kids' lives. But that really was my comfort zone. Yeah, and so yeah. it worked out really well. There's nothing wrong with having a comfort zone as yeah, a teacher. Yeah, for sure. You know, I mean, there there, I the teachers that that. Uh, um, handled me in high school. Um, uh, I, 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 let's just say I, I, they had to get out of their comfort zone sometimes <laughs> when I was a student. Miss Beard and a few others I can, I can mention, Miss Kirshner. Are those, um, are those apologies? Yeah, 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 yeah. They know, they know. Um, so, so you, principal for nine years, when did you, the first superintendent job come open to where you're like, okay, I, I think I want to try this? Yeah, that's a great question. So, um, again, 
I thought it would happen a little sooner. God had me on pause for a period of time. And so I actually was bivocational for about five to six years, I think about five and a half years, where I was a principal during the week, Monday through Friday, and, and I, I was a pastor, pastor yeah. as well. Yeah. So um, I was pastoring a church. Um, uh, interesting kind of scenario where uh, Winchester First United Methodist Church that mm -hmm. was in that community for hundreds of years, the oldest church in town essentially, mm -hmm. uh, had lost their sanctuary, it had to be raised, they had to tear it down. Oh. So they had uh, they had uh, declined in number uh, considerably over the course of you know a, a, a decade or so after that 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 building had to be raised and so they were in need of some support and so the church that I was part of which is the, the Compass Church partnered with Winchester first and kind of became one so we had this marriage yeah. between two churches so that whole experience is a story in itself that right. I, could, I could I could talk all day about um, honoring the past and loving on people as right. you move through a very difficult transition sure. and. Yeah. Uh, had the opportunity and the privilege of leading people through that, which was yeah. really, really awesome. Um, and got to the point where we we finally built a new building. And so yeah. we uh, we built uh, a new church building from from the ground up. Um, and uh, I the, the week that we opened that new building, uh, it was the same week I got a phone call and said, hey, we want you to be our superintendent at South Henry School Corporation. So God was like, hey, this door's closed. Right. Here's the bridge to what's next. Yeah. And um, it seemed and, like that was preparing you. Oh, without question. Yeah. Without Before question. That, yeah. yeah. You know, the opportunity to lead people in that way is, is way different. And right. I know you've experienced sure. that some Absolutely. in your life. Yes. And, yes. Um, you know, God really gave me opportunities to make a difference, hopefully, in people's lives, but to love on people, to show people grace and, and to receive grace right. that I probably didn't deserve at mm -hmm. times as right. I probably failed in many ways. Right. And so oh, yes. um, I... It really taught me a lot, and, and too about perseverance and grit. You know, we we were uh, we were without a home for a long time as a church, and so we were in a temporary facility. Right. My Sunday started about 4 a.m., where I got up and did a little sermon prep, and and then we'd set up the entire sanctuary and tear it down every Sunday. Yeah. And so that pattern was repeated for you know 250 or so Sundays, and so um, you know you look back at those seasons of time in your right. life. And there's a part of your heart that says, "Man, I'd love to go back and sure. do that again," and there's a part of you that says, "Man, that was." really hard right but regardless of which side of my heart is speaking there's no question that that prepared me and made sure. me a better human always serves a purpose yeah for sure yeah. and I think I think I'm a more empathetic leader now I think um, I lead more from a, a loving on people perspective um, rather than a, a very focused on the goal perspective because right. um, the reality of it is and what I found over time and maybe this is wisdom I don't know <laughs> I don't know what it is but I think I've learned that um, if you seek the right things, the outcome is often what, what, what you thought you should have sought anyway. Right. If yeah. that makes sense. Yeah. Um, yeah, exactly. And so, you know, I, I hope to lead in that way, where I'm really seeking after relationships with people and 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 making Fayette County School Corporation the best place for people to be. Yeah. Um, and I think if we do that, then the unintended, unintended intended outcome will be right you know, winning and, yeah. and higher test scores and all of those things that mm -hmm. I think were judged upon. Mm -hmm. um, and so, sorry, long, no, long story. No, gosh, no, no, gosh, no, no, that makes my job <laughs> a lot easier. I mean, it, 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 when, when, you, when you think about what you have gone through in your life, it seems like there has been a natural progression, a, a, a puzzle that has been putting all the pieces together to lead yeah. you to where you are. There has been jagged edges that's been hard <laughs> as we all go through. For sure. But you're right. There are times when you look back and think, yeah, that was difficult, but I got through it. Yeah. It maybe wasn't as difficult as I thought at the time. You you will encounter that with teachers that may be going through a moment uh, sure. on your staff that's, you know, because there's burnout. Yeah, teacher sure. in, in, in school, there's a lot of burnout. How, how do you, how do you, what, mm -hmm. what's your advice for teachers that may be getting some burnout? Yeah, that's, that's, that's a good question. You know, it's never as good or as bad, or as, bad as it feels. Um, yeah. And, and yeah. Uh, I mean, it's just, thus is life, right? Yeah. And so I, I think what happens oftentimes, and I talk to our teachers on the first day about this a lot. Um, you know, we all have a why. We all got into it for a reason. Mm -hmm. Mine was obviously what I shared, that I wanted mm -hmm. to make a difference in the lives of others in a way that people had done for me, mm -hmm. that gift that they'd given me. And, um, but oftentimes that why gets kind of covered up 
in the midst of the ugliness of what can be, mm, you know, sure, what yeah. I mean, it was like state testing and yeah. um, behavioral issues or whatever they happen to be, all the stuff that we deal with as educators on mm -hmm. a daily basis, mm -hmm. the heaviness that can be. And what that does is it covers up our why and we forget, you know, and right. so um, so how do we how do we ground ourselves in a way that allows us to pull all that stuff away and have our why shine through? Mm -hmm. So we talk to our teachers about, um, you know, what is your Ebenezer? And that's a term from the Bible that yeah. essentially says, mm -hmm. like, remember the goodness that, mm -hmm. that's happened in the past. Mm -hmm. And so, like, how do you hold on to those things in life that have happened to you that have been really, really good? Like that kiddo that sent you the letter to affirm the work that you did with them. Yeah or the thank you card that you received, or the words of affirmation that someone gave you. And how do you hold on to those things and come back to them? So when things are really, really hard, like that's, how, that's where you ground yourself, that's mm -hmm. where you keep yourself, and that way your why will shine through. And that really is my encouragement for people. Mm -hmm. um, that's my encouragement for myself too, as I look at my kind of essential things that I keep in front of me all the time, that's a big one for me, is to remember that why. Um, mm -hmm. and to build systems around myself. Like we talk about self-care a lot, mm -hmm. yeah. which I know is really, really important. But the purpose of self-care, you know, that that 30 minute massage is really nice. You're right. <laughs> but what does it do? Yeah. It pulls all that yuck away mm -hmm. so we can focus on what's important. So that mm -hmm. why shines through. And so, um, so yeah, that, that's, that's kind of my thoughts on mm -hmm. that and mm -hmm. um, things I try to live by. Those are good things to live by. Absolutely, <laughs> do the best I can. So you, again, you came from Monroe Central. Was that the last place you came from? So Monroe, I went from no, Monroe no. Central to Winchester, Winchester and yes. then Winchester to South, South Henry. South Henry, yeah. that's right. Yes. So you're at South Henry, and now, do you guys? I know in radio we had what we call dirt sheets, which are the the, the magazines that let us know, or or the sites that let us know about jobs. Yeah. Call them the dirt sheets for whatever reason, <laughs> um, or the sheets. Yeah. Um, do you guys have something like that in education where uh, you can sign up for something and it lets you know about jobs? Uh, there are organizations out there, like the Superintendents Association, um, that are, first of all, really, really important. You know, mm -hmm. this job is a job. Any leadership job can be an island if you let it be. Mm -hmm. And so being involved with those organizations and those people is really important. But those types of organizations always put out those openings. And then most, most, uh, most superintendent openings will use uh, some type of search team. Um, and so in this case, it was a university search team. And so that search team will do kind of advertising, push that mm -hmm. out to to the circles, if you will, mm -hmm. of superintendents to say, hey, here's an opening, here's Connorsville, Indiana, here's what Connorsville offers, here's Fayette County Circle School Corporation, here's kind of the nuts and bolts of, of the job. Um, and uh, and then from there, of course, then folks that are interested and say, hey, that's, that's a place I'd love to be would apply and there's mm -hmm. a process to that of course um, you know hiring a superintendent's a big deal sure and, uh, yeah. and I never I never want to take that responsibility and thus and also that privilege lightly because um, it is it is a big deal because yeah. you're the CEO basically absolutely the, yeah. and even more importantly I'm I'm the person that's entrusted with um, the most precious assets of our community yeah, which our is children. our children yeah. and so um, Never, ever will I take that lightly, yeah. um, both in safety and future planning and all of those things. Um, you know, we're entrusted with those children. Yeah. And when, when our adults, our parents, our, our guardians drop those kids off with us, they expect us to do that well. And, yeah. and that's, a, that's, a, that's pressure, but it's yeah. also, the flip side of that is it's also opportunity. So yeah. that's, that's yeah. where yeah, we, like, we that. like to live there. Yeah. yeah, yeah, absolutely. So I'm sure every year there's always multiple jobs opening maybe mm -hmm. not i don't know sure um what what was it about connorsville that okay i think i need to have the conversation with the wife to say yeah i'm i'm going to apply yeah yeah you know? yeah that's a good question um i i could have spent the rest of my career at south henry i mm -hmm. really believe that it's mm -hmm. a good place wonderful people you know we'd seen a lot of success in a lot of ways academically athletically we grew about 14 percent during my three years there we added some programming and and we were doing some really good things and then uh you know god has a way of just just sometimes throwing curveballs at you always um i do believe he, he gives you the opportunity to serve in whatever context you're in right. some, some sometimes those steps aren't as guided as we'd like them to be mm -hmm. um but in this in this sense i i really felt like i was called to a bigger corporation um maybe a, a little larger sphere of influence um the opportunity to lead you know more people 
And um, Connorsville gave that opportunity. That and the fact that Fayette County School Corporation has such a rich history of excellence mm -hmm. um, in so many ways. You know, you look at um, the things that, that we've done here over the course of time. Mm -hmm. You know, athletics obviously have been very, very good. Mm -hmm. um, academics really, really awesome with early college and they need a college core and all the things that we provide. A TV station that's the oldest mm -hmm. in the country, yeah. I think, right? Yeah. And um, just that rich history of excellence and, and being able to step in and say, hey, here are the, all the awesome things that we've done over the course of our history. Like, mm -hmm. but how do how do we how do we how do we be better? How do we do things better? How do we better serve kids? How do we better prepare kids for their futures? You know, we we talk a lot as a staff about how the day after graduation really drives what we do. Mm -hmm. um, and what I mean by that is, you know, everything that we do leads up to that point right. where a kid's standing there the day yeah. after graduation trying to figure out their next steps. Yeah, and from uh, the moment of kindergarten, first yeah, day to that thir last 13 day. plus years, right? Yeah. Preschool before that. And oh so, yeah, that's right, yeah. Yeah, so how do you, how do you, how do you build the durable skills? How do you, this is a piece I think is really near and dear to my heart. How do we show kids how they're gifted? Because I think the educational system over the course of time has done a really good job of building skills in children, right? Yeah. That's what we're set up to do. Right. But like looking at kids and saying, this is how you're uniquely gifted, you know? Yeah. Um, and here's how it fits in the world, you know, yeah. like um, here, here are career pathways and pathways to gainful employment that work for your giftings, right? And then mm -hmm. how do we show kids their passions? Like what, right. what makes their heart burn, you know? Right. I mean, the truth is if you can find the intersection of those, those things, like that's where true purpose is in our right. lives. And so, um, you know, we... We've uh, we've had those conversations. We've, we're, we're working on building those systems. But the truth is, Fayette County School Corporation has done such a wonderful job over the course of so many years. You've experienced it as a student yeah. of uh, of helping kids uh, be prepared for that day after yeah. graduation. And yeah. we 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 hope to only be better tomorrow yeah. than we were today. Yeah. I, even though I was a heathen, <laughs> I can honestly say that I've had a, a, a great mentors. Mm -hmm. You know, Mr. Fred Smith, I was in his office a lot. <laughs> uh, uh, and, and Mr. Geestein, uh, Mrs. Geestein, uh, Mr. Havlicek, who his son is mm -hmm. the assistant uh, um, AD. Uh, I mean, I can go on and on. I, and I don't even want to go on and on because I miss <laughs> Beard, Carla Beard, Mr. Beard. Because um, I, I, I don't want to forget anybody. But uh, yeah, they had a huge impact in my life. Mm -hmm. At the time, I didn't realize it. Yeah. Because uh, you don't realize those things when you're a heathen. Um, but uh, later on in life, uh, you know, it's like, oh, yes. Yeah. And Mr. Judd has mentioned uh, as, as well. So um, we got about two and a half minutes to go. It goes by fast. That was really yeah, quick. It goes by yeah. really fast. Uh, talked a little bit about what, what, what we have going on, what we've, the, the rich history, you know, anything future wise that you have planned that you yeah. maybe can talk about or not. Sure. Yeah. So some things coming. We've got uh, renovations that are happening. Currently, mm -hmm. the restrooms in the bowl are being renovated. Those oh, will hopefully be really yeah. nice when they're finished. If you go in there right now, you won't find yeah. <laughs> much to much to use because yeah. um, uh, it's all been uh, kind of stripped out. Right. We are uh, undergoing a new a renovation of Frazee Elementary School oh, okay. um, that'll start here at the end of the year, uh, about a six, six million dollar renovation. Wow. Um, floor to ceiling, which will be really, really nice. Yeah. Uh, for our folks here at Frazee. Are the kids going to be still going to school there? Yeah. Oh, yeah. wow. So it's yeah. going to be done in the way that hopefully we'll phase it uh, yeah. so that so it won't be too much of an interruption to the educational yeah. process. Um, and then uh, pool renovations coming too in the spring. <laughs> oh, right, um, yeah. And so, yeah, that'll be exciting as we invest in that facility. There may not be a lot. There's going to be some things that you can see, yeah. um, but a lot of that work happens behind the scenes, yeah, you right. know, just to make sure that our yeah. pool is, is usable and, yeah. and usable for years to come. So. Yeah, absolutely. Well, uh, Jeremy, is, we can go on and on and on, you know, and you feel free to come back anytime because oh, I'm well, sure there's going to be a lot. a lot of things that are on the horizon for Fayette County uh, schools under your tutelage and and uh, we could be in a better uh, uh, hands uh, with, with you at, at, at the helm. So God bless you, and thank you very much yeah, for, for, so, for so being much. here. And you yeah. know, if you have any questions about Fayette County School, I'm sure you can check this guy out, and we'll check you out next month on the spot.